Welcome back to Tech Check. And for the close of season two, we thought let's do something different, inspirational, and talk about prolific Pakistanis who've done some interesting and amazing things throughout the course of their life and are helping us to continue with that success. And with that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Mahmoud Khan. Dr. Khan, thank you for being with us today. It's a pleasure. Uh, as always, to catch up and uh, even more so to uh, share this experience. It's, uh, this is cool. <laughs> well, it's very cool of you to make the time to join, join us. And the first thing I'd like to do, Dr. Khan, is uh, obviously highlight a little bit about the pinnacle of corporate success that you achieve working at PepsiCo as the vice chairman for a number of years. I think one thing we're trying to do is inspire some of our younger people, particularly back home, who are in that build mode. And I think something that would really help, the first question I would love to ask you is, what's, what's the story? You know, tell us how this all came about. Story's not that complicated. Uh, I started my career, like many, uh, as a professional, in my case, a practicing physician, academic scientist, Mayo Clinic, um, really wanted to think about how do I do things that have a broader impact. Loved practice, but one patient at a time was not sort of what I wanted to do inside me. Not that it's wrong or right. And that uh, led me to, from my research to the corporate world, ended up uh, at a company called Takeda Pharmaceuticals, became president of the Global R&D Center there over time and then eventually got recruited to become uh, head of R&D and then ultimately CEO and of um, one of the major divisions and then vice chairman. None of it was planned, let me be clear. Uh, I, I am a firm believer that careers are not planned, but one prepares oneself for opportunities when they come. You can't predict when they're going to come. And that's my story. It's been uh, one of those things that when the opportunities have presented themselves, I've always been one to push myself to cross the fence rather than sitting on the side of the fence wondering what it's like on the other side. Now that's that's phenomenal, uh, Dr. Khan. And I think one of the things... And you got to call me Mahmoud, please. <laughs> I'm just, just trying to give some respect to the title, but I'll call you Mahmoud all day long. <laughs> so as I was, as I was saying, uh, Mahmoud, it was... What's, what I find very interesting is, you know, we have a really strong, nascent population, very young, growing very quickly. And I think one of the things that would be really important is to share, you know, your, whatever the case may be, you didn't leave your faith nor your culture behind. What do you, what do you recommend to these young folks who are quickly being absorbed into this westernized environment? What are some learning lessons that you've had that keep them true to path? I always distinguish between culture, faith, and values. Okay. Faith is the religion we choose to follow, however we choose to follow it. I am by no means in qualified in any way to judge whether a person is religious or not, pious or not. I mean, that's for a higher being than I. But you have to be true to what you believe. Now, the culture part varies with society, varies in the same society over time. It varies from generations. And one of the things I've tried to do hard is that I'm not anchored in the culture, expression of culture of my parents' generation, nor do I expect it of my children, and each will evolve. And frankly, you know, Pakistanis uh, have evolved their culture in our lifetime. The key is are you anchored to your values? And I think. Those values transcend generations, they transcend time, and one would hope they transcend uh, different societies. Sometimes they don't. And once you uh, can anchor yourself in those values, then that becomes a very important North Star. And to me, that's what's important. I always ask myself, is this person share the same values as I do? Before I think about it, they share the same religion or culture. Uh, uh, or even family members, just because you are related, doesn't mean you have the same values. Unfortunately, sometimes, but we won't go there. 
<laughs> Fair observation, particularly in our environments. So, so you know, with that, so I wanted to build on that a little. So, you know, the value system now, and the one, and, and I'm going to be a little open and real here because we both yeah. are aware of what's going on. You know, Pakistan can be very challenging uh, to for people to maintain a certain mindset or thinking because of that environment. As people, as you see these people starting to grow up in Pakistan that are building these businesses, what are some things, you know, that come to your mind? What can they do to kind of hold true to the value system that works outside of Pakistan and you think would help Pakistanis? So my experience of Pakistan, first of all, is second hand. As you know, I'm a second generation Pakistani. Right. However, I was fortunate in my parents maintained close ties as I was growing up, as, and then we did for our children. Uh, and so given that sort of second nature of my experience, and I, I have the fortune of being on the board uh, of LUMS, Lahore University of Management Sciences, I engage in a number of ways in Pakistani business environment. Um, business values are business values. They don't change. I think the challenges facing Pakistanis, uh, some are common to any emerging country. The availability of capital, the availability of resources, the availability of talent. Right. We have very, very talented Pakistanis. You and I are of Pakistani origin. Uh, intelligence and talent is not a genetic monopoly. It is a product of several factors, which includes the environment where you get a chance to be nurtured, mentored, guided, and if anything, young talent in Pakistan, working in Pakistan, have a relative deficiency of those role models and mentors. Fair that's, enough. Not a, that's not a problem that they created, but it is a reality. And it, it's reflected, if you think about the number of successful Pakistani companies of scale, given we have 200 million Pakistanis, it's very small. Uh, sure. And how many of those operate outside Pakistan, right? Uh, and I'm not talking about multinationals operating in Pakistan, I'm talking about Pakistani entities. Outside. The last thing I would say is that too many Pakistani companies are essentially family-owned businesses. Mm -hmm. And as a result, the governance structure, the leadership, the career development, the uh, mentoring is not the same as what you expect in multinationals or publicly traded companies in Europe and North America, for example. Right. You know, this is uh, e extremely insightful, Mahmoud, and very helpful. And I'm, what we're hoping is that our audience members really kind of listen and absorb and try to take some of the lessons away from, from this. And there's a lot to be learned and continue to be learned. And I think that's one really good thing that we're also starting to see in that ecosystem is a more of a continual learner mindset being developed. So I, I hope- we can But Farooq, um, I have to say on the, on the positive optimistic side, mm. there are two things that you'll find in entrepreneurs in Pakistan. They're on average, much more resourceful and creative. Very true. Because when you have limited resources, you really innovate. You creativity expresses itself. You take risks in ways you otherwise might not. Yeah. That's a plus. The second is that in this much more connected world, they're not in. They're not isolated anymore. True. They're yeah. seeing the alternatives. They're studying the alternatives. They're reading. They're watching. They're looking uh, at you know activities and programs like your tech check, right? So they're getting exposed to this. A generation ago, that wasn't possible. Very true. And so I'm much more optimistic of this next generation. If you leverage all that connectivity and the work of people like yourself, it sort of is reassuring when you're that entrepreneur, business, whatever career in Pakistan that you can see and say there is an alternative way. I want to study it. You don't have to be there. Uh, and, you know, and then you've got, you know, brilliant people like the Khan Academy, right? who mm -hmm. showed the world, you know, that uh, education can be democratized in ways we never thought possible. Absolutely. And we need to celebrate that. Absolutely. No, very, very, very enlightening and very helpful, 
Um, and that's, you know, a good, and this positivity push is what we're all about here at Tech Check is just trying to accentuate and develop and help people understand what's good about what's going on in Pakistan and helping overcome some of the perceptions that have been built over the years. As you know, Mahmoud, we try to keep these short and sweet. I have a tough time competing with TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> so don't even to, try. <laughs> we're not. We're not going to. But we've come to the end of our time. First of all, uh, from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for giving your always being generous with your time and your knowledge. We much appreciate that. I would uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, let's leave it with a simple message. Whoever is out there, take the opportunity to give it a shot. Uh, there are plenty of naysayers in life. And you know what? Most of them have never done it themselves. Look to the people who actually have taken the leap and follow after, as opposed to the 10 reasons why you can't. So keep it up. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. And to our audience, again, thank you for supporting us. Please continue to like, share, and subscribe. We've covered 100 unique individual Pakistani companies and individuals across the ecosystem. Many more stories to come. Stay tuned for our next season. And with that, I bid you all Allah Hafiz.